Okay, and I think we are live. So greetings, everyone. Um, whether you're coming to me from the stream I just finished or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Nikki. I'm an author and editor, and I post videos here on YouTube about writing, editing, reading, and all the other things I love. Today we're talking about reading because it's time for my end of the month book wrap up. You have to excuse me because I really feel like I'm about to sneeze. Um, so I'm trying not to, but if I suddenly sneeze in a minute, apologies. Uh, it couldn't do it before I started the stream, no. Anyway, uh, we're talking about the books I've read during November. So I've got a few to get through. Um, it's not the biggest month for me, but I've been reading a lot of manga, which I'll talk about at the end. So uh, let's crack straight on uh, with the first book. So first up, I read The Illness Lesson by Claire Beams. Uh, this was a book I received from NetGalley. Now, um, The Illness Lesson, and now I've got a cramp in my foot. Could you believe it? It's like, what else can possibly go wrong in this stream? I'm going to have to stand up for a second. Bear with me. OK, I'll carry on talking while I get rid of my foot cramp. Um, the Illness Lesson by Claire Beams. Uh, this is a literary fiction piece about a uh, said in, in the past about a group of uh, women who are in this new school uh, essentially a, a group I, I suppose I should start from the beginning uh, a series of red birds arrive and uh, the father of this girl takes it as an omen that he should open a school <laughs> um, in his home so he does for uh, you know upper class young ladies He's a fairly liberal sort of person. He's given his own daughter a liberal education for the time. Uh, he doesn't believe women should be treated differently than boys in terms of education. And this is an experiment he wants to pursue with this new school. However, when the girls arrive at school, um, they start falling ill um, and an issue of hysteria comes up. And I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to say any more than that. But it was a really interesting uh, psychological piece um, looking at um, in, in some ways a feminist piece, I guess, in that it, it's looking at the way um, men choose to interpret a woman's world. And the explanation the girls are giving are essentially ignored in favour of the male explanation for what's going on, um, to put it in a nutshell. Um, overall, I did enjoy it. I thought it was um, an interesting read. I gave it four and a half stars. It was quite captivating and thought provoking, if that's your kind of read. Next up, I read The Elementalist, Rise of Hara by T.M. White, which is another net galley read. Uh, this is a fantasy piece, the first in like, what I believe is going to be a trilogy. Um, I quite liked the premise of The Elementalists. Um, I liked the two main characters. However, overall, the book felt a tad too long for me. I mean, it was 600 odd pages. Um, and whereas some fantasy, I think, needs to be 600 odd pages, this one didn't. I think um, there were moments when the pace got very slow, um, it got very wordy and dialogue full, uh, unnecessarily so. Um, a fair bit of repetition of characters thinking about their feelings and things. Um, if I was editing this myself, I'd want to go in there with a red pen and just make some cuts. I think about 400, 450 word um, pages would have been exactly right for this story, um, enough to tell it without getting bogged down in repetition and too much unnecessary detail. So in terms of reading on, um, I mean, I gave this book three stars. If I got an opportunity to read the second one and I didn't have any other pressing reads on my t TBR part, I'd read it, but I wouldn't rush out to find it. Next up, another NetGalley read, Till by Daniel Kelman. Uh, now this is a book, an interesting piece. I, I'm gonna start off by saying I gave it four stars. It's historical fiction, but it's historical fiction that blends in folklore. I mean, Thiel is a folklore character um, from Germany. He's a bit of a trickster. Um, and they, in this piece, um, Kelman has moved him to the period of the Thirty Years' War, and he ends up mixing with all sorts, from peasants up to uh, rulers and military generals and things. Uh, making them sort of look at themselves in a different light and casting a different light on, on the events of the Thirty Years' War. Um, that sounds really dull, <laughs> but it's actually, it was fairly entertaining. Um, it's not going to appeal to everyone, definitely. It's uh, going to be an acquired taste sort of book. But if you like kind of twists on folklore and folk characters, um, then it's definitely worth checking out. 
Next up, I read Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera. Now, this is the first book in Silvera's new YA fantasy superhero series. Um, I gave it three stars. Uh, I really wanted to enjoy this more than I did. I thought the premise was great. Um, I liked the idea behind the story. I liked the characters. However, there was a real lack of world building going on in the piece. Um, we never really got to understand. We were kind of thrown into this established world, but we never really got a background on how it worked, why it became that way or anything like that. I mean, maybe he's, he's going to go into it more in the future volumes. As I said, this is planned to be a trilogy, but I just, I just felt it was lacking something for a fantasy. If it had been a contemporary, which is what he usually writes, then the amount of world building's fine. But for what he was writing this time, genre-wise, he really needed something more than he gave it. Next up, sticking with NetGalley, for Creative Journaling by Renee Day. This was a four-star read for me. It's a really nice resource. If you're new to journaling or if you're an old hand who wants to try something different, there was definitely a little bit for everyone in this book. The first chapter or so kind of looks essentially at what's a bullet journaling method. So if you're already bullet journaling, there's probably not a lot for you in that chapter. However, if you're new to it, it's a great overview. However, after that, um, the author went on to look at different sorts of mixed media journaling, um, junk journaling, travel journaling. And definitely if you were uh, into journaling and just wanted to try a hand at a different style or a different um, way of approaching it, then there's something here that would interest you, I think. Next up, the final NetGalley read for the month was The Wolf and the Sparrow by Isabel Adler. So this is an MM, or I should say LGBT, um, an LGBT uh, fantasy tale, a standalone story. Uh, this was three and a half stars for me. I, again, as with Infinity Sun, I really liked the premise and I liked the characters. Um, one of them is called Derek, which it did take me a little bit of time to get over that. And not because I have anything against the name Derek, but just in a fantasy setting, it felt a little bit weird for the first uh, few pages till I got used to it. However, um, as with Infinity Sun, I just felt it needed more world building again. We're sort of thrown into this world. We're told this magic exists, but we don't really understand the, a lot of the background behind it. So I would have liked, this is a fairly short novella length piece. I would have liked it to have been expanded just a tiny bit, just to include a few more of those details. And then it probably would have been a four star for me as it is three and a half. I'm just gonna have a little drink pause because my throat's going. Sneezing, foot cramps, and now sort of dry throats. It's going really well, the stream, isn't it? Anyway, uh, moving on to some books I have borrowed. First up, a book I borrowed from a friend at uh, work. This is called Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. It's an Australian uh, release, I think, from last year. This was a really interesting book. Um, I'm trying to think how to describe it. I gave it four stars. It's kind of a contemporary story, um, I think partly based on Dalton's own life, not completely, but um, elements of it. And it's about a boy coming of age um, in a world where he's mixing with drug dealers and um, various other sorts. Um, he has an unconventional, let's say, upbringing. However, there's kind of hints of magical realism, or is there, going on. Um, we're never really told at the end whether it was real, all these things he's experiencing, or whether it was just his childish imagination. But uh, an element of magical realism, if that's your thing. I thought the pro style uh, worked well. It was interesting. It kept me reading. Um, I liked the characters. It took, I should say, it took me a little while to get into it. It probably took me about the first quarter of the book to get into it. However, my colleague who lent me the book had expressed the same opinion. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm not one to DFN a book in general anyway. Oh, D, DFN, DNF. See, it's, it's going so well. D DNF, I don't often DNF books. Um, so it would have taken something really bad for me to do so, but I did know to persevere anyway, because my colleague said it's a slow start and then it picks up. And that was definitely true. So if you do give it a try, um, give it a chance. Um, for those first few chapters, you might be sort of like, what on earth is this, <laughs> what's it about? But it will um, it will mellow out and you will be able to follow it after a short while. 
so yeah it was definitely it was something different um something interesting it got the book of the year or something and i my both my colleague and i kind of thought well we're not sure why that was we both enjoyed it we both would give it around a four star mark it was good we liked it but we weren't absolutely blown away that we'd want to reread it 20 million times or anything like that uh next up books um borrowed from the library so um i'm planning a trip to japan next year i've um, never been there before so i borrowed the lonely planet best of japan guide um overall i thought this was a good book i gave it four stars it was a good introductory text um just covering the whole of japan in brief uh just kind of the highlights if you like and for that it was just a good idea um useful for me to get the gist of what's where what sort of things might interest me what won't uh it is only an overview text though so if you're looking for more detail on particular areas you'd need to get other books on that which is why i gave it four stars um moving on i have oh sticking with the same theme i suppose tokyo geeks guide by gianni simone which i also borrowed from the library so this one really zooms in on tokyo and on the otaku culture um, where to go um, for manga anime gaming and all that sort of thing uh, since that is a big interest in why I want to go to Japan, uh, I found this book really great, uh, very useful. I've made a few notes on some shops, which uh, assuming they're still there, because obviously this book's a couple of years old now, uh, some shops I'd like to check out. And I'll be able to look them up online now, see if they're still there and get a bit more information. So, uh, yeah, definitely as, a, as an otaku, as a geek myself, um, I thought it was really nicely presented, split up into... Um, areas of Tokyo so you can kind of do one area and move on to do another area uh, lots of good information so yeah it was uh, a four star read for me um, definitely really useful enjoyable book next up we have uh, let me see where's my list oh yeah so two books I bought Essential Japanese Grammar by Masahiro Tanimori and Eriko Sato um, so another Japanese grammar book I had a basic one and I had a comprehensive one, so I kind of wanted to get in the middle one. Um, this is a four star read for me. It's It's got a lot of really great information and it explains things well, but it comes across as a little bit dry. Um, it's a, a little bit of a book you just go to to get information, not one you, I mean, not that you enjoy reading a grammar book, but um, if you know what I mean, it's not an easy um, light, read uh, you really have to go in there and be willing to study uh, if you see what i mean so that's why it gets four stars for me it's just not enticing i guess um it's very dry uh next up japanese stories for language learners by mcnulty and sato uh this is a book that takes five stories um presents them in um japanese but also with parallel english text um and a whole host of um extras such as um explanation of some of the terms uh, and also audio recordings of the stories being read uh, this book i gave five stars in some ways it's a little bit too advanced for me at my current stage however i did look through the first story and glancing back and forth between the english and the notes as well i was able to follow it and i enjoyed listening to it just to get a bit of a sense of how you pronounce these things the flow of the language so i think it's going to be something that i'll dip in and out of at the moment but once I progress a little bit further, then I'm really looking forward to attempting to read these in the Japanese on my own. Um, but having that English there if I need to refer to something. Um, moving on. So we're pretty much down to manga now. So um, first off, I'll talk about ones I've read from the library and then I'll finish with my favourite so I can waffle about it for a few minutes. <laughs> um, so from the library, I borrowed Black Rose Alice by Mizushira Satona. Um, now, I was only able to borrow the first five volumes. This is a series that was discontinued, so it never ended, ended, as far as I know. But there were six volumes. However, the library, for some reason, only has one to five. So I've read one to five, and I did enjoy them. I liked the storyline. Um, the basic premise is that uh, this woman has been chosen by a group of vampires who want to um, breed with her, <laughs> essentially. Uh, she was going to die, so they've put her into this other body. There's a whole backstory to that, just um, I won't spoil it too much. And she's got to pick which of them she likes the best that she wants to um, breed with, <laughs> to put it bluntly. 
Um, I did enjoy it. I liked the characters. I liked the premise. Uh, I liked the drawing style. Um, I will look up online what happened in book six since I can't finish it. Uh, I didn't love it enough, you see, to buy it. So um, if the library doesn't have book six, I'll just look up on, on Wikipedia or something what the, uh, what the premise of book six was to see what I missed. I have several series that I'm borrowing from the library that I'm still reading, so I'm not going to really review them this time. I'll just mention what I'm what I'm working through. So I'm about halfway through Bakuman by um, Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata, uh, the guys who wrote Death Note. And this is a series that um, the story follows two young guys who are trying to become manga artists. So it's really sort of um, background insight into how um, manga is created, how the industry works and things like that. And it's, it's actually been really entertaining. So I'm halfway through and I've got the others on request from the library. So hopefully I will receive those uh, soon. I think some of them are already in transit. So maybe I'll be able to give you the review of the whole series, what I thought about it at the end of December, with luck. Uh, I'm also continuing still with Tokyo Ghoul Ray by uh, Ishida Sui. Um, I'm up to book, I've read up to book 10. I've got book 11 um, on request at the library and the library also has book 12, but uh, that's as far as the library's got at the moment. Book 13 only just came out or is just coming out, I think. So it, I won't finish that one for a while, so I'm gonna have to wait till the library gets them in and then I can borrow them. But um, I am enjoying it, um, continuing with that. Uh, oh, I'm also reading Pandora Hearts um, by Mochizuki Yun. Um, I'm about halfway through this series. Um, I'm still requesting some from the library. Um, I think one more has come in, which places me halfway through the series. And then I need to request some more. But a few of them are out with other readers at the moment, so I'll have a little bit of a wait for that one. Um, this is another sort of fantasy style tale. Um, it's, it's, it's an incredibly complicated story, so I don't think I'm even going to attempt to explain it in a nutshell, but it's basically a fantasy manga. Um, so I will tell you, I will try and think of how to explain it succinctly without spoiling it before the next video or before I do a wrap up of what I thought of the whole series for you. And finally, uh, Devil's Unrealist by uh, Madoka Takadono and Itaku Yukihiro. And this is again a fantasy. This one's a bit easier to explain. Um, someone who's a descendant of King Solomon um, is the one who can decide who is going to lead the devils while Lucifer takes a nap, essentially. So all the demons are coming to him trying to get them to pick him. Uh, that's the basic premise of this one. That was a bit easier to explain than Pandora or Hearts. And I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm, I think, about six books in to, what, about an 18 books, 15 to 18 book series. I can't remember how many it is off the top of my head. So I'm about a third through anyway. Um, and I'll continue to request those from the library as well. Which brings us to the last um, one, which uh, Black Butler I'm now up to date with. Um, I've I was started reading this from the library, but I loved it so much I went and bought them all. So I now have the final, uh, final current volume, 28. I've read up to date. I'm eagerly awaiting the remainder, um, but I'll have to wait until they bring some more out now before I continue reading. But uh, as you all know, I've been talking about Blood Butler a bit in terms of anime and things as well, and I absolutely adore it. So I'm happy to have all those on my shelf and I have coming for Christmas and birthday presents, the two art books that, um, Tabasa Yana has released as well, so I'm looking forward to getting those to add to the collection. So I think that's about all for me for this month. I look forward to uh, sharing some more books with you next month. I'm actually up to date essentially with my TBR pile. I've got a book I've borrowed from the library, a sci-fi book that I'm going to be doing with uh, my friend Alina as a read-along in genre talk in January. All Systems read by Martha Wells, so I'm going to be starting that tonight. But otherwise I am up to date. However, Birthday and Christmas are now only a few weeks off and I will get a few more books, um, probably something in the 20 to 30 books um, range again then. So I'll have plenty to read soon. Um, for now, I'll just continue with the manga and maybe do a couple of quick rereads, um, depending on how timings work out until I get those new books. So I will end there. I hope you'll join me again soon. I'm, as always, I'm here with my regular streams throughout the month with these end of the month two wrap ups that I do. And of course my monthly drama talk streams with Alina. So um, the next thing I post will probably be the drama talk stream, I think. Um, no, I'll, I'll have another video on my own channel before that, but we will be back for drama talk on the 8th of December as well. So do join us then. I will close for now, but I look forward to seeing you all again very soon.
Bye, everyone.